everybody. Welcome to the uh, latest installment of MSP Business School. We've, we've got a fun conversation in store for you today. But before I introduce our special guest, I want to say hello, as always, to my uh, gracious co-hosts, Tim and Rob over here. Um, guys, how are you doing this week? Doing Good. well. Uh, I'm loving your background there, Brian. I've never seen that before. That's that's nice. Oh, yes. You know, we're, we're yeah. matching bricks now. It's almost like we're going to get our mug shots <laughs> yeah, done. I feel like I got to right. look forward <laughs> and off to the side, maybe hold a little bit of a plaque. But That's know, right. Yeah, we got to be the only guys that said, let's dress up our world by making it look like we went to prison. But um, <laughs> <laughs> in any event, um, with us today, we have Bill Stuckland from Stack Advisors. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to hear and learn a little bit about Bill's background, how he came to becoming on the dark side, as many of the people call us vendors right and, and becoming part of that but really excited to hear their conversation and and i know you've got a relationship with tim and rob so for me this is going to be great because i get to hear new information for a change this is really fun it's going to be a good one <laughs> well, that's so good. Well, thank you thank you for having me i'm very excited to be here and um, hopefully i can um, uh, share some share some insights over my time uh, in the it space Maybe kick it off by telling us your roots. You know, how did you end up in the world of the glorious world of MSP? Yeah, this is always a fun story and it will kind of date me a bit. Um, so I got my start uh, with IT after college. So I went to college and I actually graduated with um, three degrees in theater. So no <laughs> IT, official <laughs> IT training in college. And although wow. one of those <laughs> degrees was technical theater, it's not technical like we think of technical. So uh, after graduating, my first job uh, after college was doing tech support for uh, a little video game called Doom that some of uh, some of the folks probably know. And I would say back in uh, the mid 90s, if you called for tech support, you probably spoke to myself or one other individual because there were only two of us doing tech support back then for Doom. Uh, I then moved to New York City to follow my dreams of working in theater and uh, use my IT background as a way to make money and kind of work my way through uh, a few really large organizations as both the contractor and, uh, you know, a temp employee uh, through a lot of banks, a lot of financial. I got a job at E! Entertainment at one point, supporting all of their East Coast offices where I was the guy and I would kind of fly around and got to work with a lot of really great people in the entertainment industry. And then the dot-com era came and that's really what sort of took me from being the support guy to being a manager, to being a director, to being a planner, to being a CTO, et cetera. And bounced around a lot of dot coms, like a lot of us did in New York. Um, I always talk about how, you know, there was a period of about three or four years where just kind of raining barrels of money from the sky and everybody was uh, not concerned about the future and what happened. And so uh, I really built up a lot of skills. Uh, a lot of teams, a lot of hours. Uh, it was a lot of fun um, and also, you know, a lot of pain when you would have to go lay folks off. Uh, and then uh, the last dot com kind of hit, the bubble burst. Uh, I was looking for work and then 9-11 uh, happened and I figured it was going to be quite a while until I got a job. And my one of my uh, former colleagues, uh, actually the first person that hired me into the dot com world, Scott Wilson and I, uh, got together and started an IT support company called Marathon Consulting uh, back in New York. And our uh, first client was actually a dot-com that had survived enough to, uh, to be able to make it through, but had laid off all their IT staff and said, hey, you know, we've got um, 60 servers that we need support for and a few staff, and we'd love to give you guys an opportunity. And this guy was a serial entrepreneur and in many ways really gave us our first start uh, starting a business. Neither of us had any kind of business background. Uh, we always say over the years that we learned, uh, we got our MBA on the streets uh, by learning <laughs> lessons, the painful, the hard way, like the first lesson taking this client, they turns out all their servers were Linux servers and um, we hadn't oh. done any Linux work. So uh, we had, we, we learned Good. a lot in those Good. first couple of years. Good. I'm uh, loving you this. Know, <laughs> you go wrong. I, I, I don't want you to go wrong. Lot to unpack, right? so, uh, we Just say that, yes. Yeah, That's right. Know, yes, right? we can. <laughs> we did. And we took that contract for about 60000 a year. So the two of us living in New York City were splitting 
that money oh and our accountant was taking a piece of it too so, so how uh, the needless to say it uh, worked <laughs> out it actually worked out um we started really was organic growth and um at the time uh you know we call it the bill and scott show i think sometimes it's kind of like when tim and rob get out there and, and do their bit right we really we just we made great friends with every one of our clients and built our business up and by uh, the time that we sold our MSP in 2015, we were 65 people. So uh, about wow. about 12 years, we had built the company up. And in the process, after bootstrapping uh, for 10 years, we decided it would be a great idea to go start another company called Stack Advisors, which is what I'm doing now and uh, start to bootstrap all over again. And in fact, this November, at IT Nation was 10 years from when we uh, finalized the idea and actually started the organization. Wow. So that's been another journey. And, and now we have, it's not a new company, but it is our, our SaaS product. It's been about three years, but we really, this year has been the big piece of launching the SaaS and doing, I think a big shift as an organization to be much more entwined with consulting and SaaS. And that's MSP Toolshed which does all of our, um, it's automated machine deployment, but it does it in a dynamic way. So instead of having images and having to manually next, 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 uh, it does uh, automated machine deployment. It's a really amazing tool. And that's my little plug for that one. What I can say, I know we like to talk here about lessons we've learned. That product came out of the lesson we learned back uh, when we were trying to scale our MSP and we had to be deploying 15 to 20 machines a week to keep up with our clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, we did it through a very robust and successful internship program. And every intern would come in and spend the first month on the bench, clicking next, next, next and installing software. So that's that's how Toolshed was like, you know, there's a problem that no MSP, you know, really has a great way of solving. And that's really what led us to, to finally build it. Technology finally came around, the tools came around and catered towards MSPs and that's what led us to do that. So that's kind of how I got here. Uh, a quick summary of the last uh, what was that, 20 plus years or so. So so I'm still stuck back on 65 employees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I know is important. Yeah, that's yeah. not quite there. We're about, we're about, you know, we're about 22 at this point. Uh, so 65. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was a big, big group of people, big, big group of people. So um, what, what can I answer for you, Rob? What do you want to know? It's it, it, like 65, people, right? 65 <laughs> different personalities. I, like I, I always yes. loved what is the, uh, what is one of the things where you did in culture, right. To keep the culture going, people motivated, like it's mm. hurting cats, right? Like yeah. what, yeah. what did, did you have some type of thing that you were able to do on the culture side to keep everybody going? Yeah. A big bar tab. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's partly a joke. I mean, it still was something. So, uh, you know, it is, it is interesting because I, you know, I, I know a lot of folks in the space now uh, have embraced EOS as a, as a way to really keep a company together. We at Stack have uh, just completed, you know, two years in, in on EOS. And I really wish I had come across it. 10, 15 years ago at our MSP. So a lot of it was brute force, uh, incredible loyalty, um, you know, beyond, beyond taking out the team, we were a very close team. And so for us, it was um, being able to depend on each other, having an open door, um, being very, very understanding of work-life balance. Uh, and, and our employees really knew that we'd have their back as much as we expected them to have each other's back. And so it was a lot of herding cats. We did have pretty solid process. And that process uh, was something that we, we didn't really kick in until we were somewhere in the mid twenties of employee wise. And it was clear we were scaling. And so we kind of got caught to say, Hey, we got to get process in place. But from a culture standpoint, the one thing that we used to do that, in fact, when we sold the organization, when we sold the company, most people said it was the one thing that they were really going to miss was our Christmas parties. <laughs> and every year we would do a massive party. And sometimes that would uh, include a, a field trip per se, uh, sometimes a fancy dinner, sometimes significant others, sometimes not. The key was, is we never actually told people what we were going to do. It was always a surprise. We would always do cool. a survey. We would always throw smoke screens we would always tell people to be prepared. We always had them sign a waiver 
regardless of what, even if we were just going out to the real life steak dinner, they would always sign away. Oh, wow. Place. So you had real yeah. fun with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we would really have fun. And so we did some pretty amazing stuff. Um, a lot of fun stuff, like a helicopter tour around New York City. Uh, we went to a Broadway show um, one time. Uh, uh, every other year, we would kind of go low key and do a really, really nice uh, steak dinner somewhere in new york and in manhattan has some pretty good steak restaurants so we, i've heard we yeah. found that pretty good <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah dj catered party uh one year we all got on a bus and went upstate uh westchester county and did the uh did go-kart racing um which was fun nobody got hurt uh the train people did ask us not to come back but you know it was fun it was good so um you know, we always we did gag gifts. That was another great thing that we did really culture wise is we would do Secret Santa, but then we would also do gag gifts. And one of our big things was that everybody got a unique T-shirt that was, uh, you know, would make fun of them. Mine always had to do with how bad of a speller I was. And um, so we would certainly make fun of ourselves as well. So it's just the culture of, of bonding and it kept people working even when process may not have supported that. And, um, you know, again, I, I think there's a lot better tools. I think there's a lot better uh, conversation these days about that process, um, mm -hmm. things like EOS. And I know there's been, there's been other things that have come along through the space. It's what really spoke to us now. Um, but those are harder to find. And it was just about building that loyalty and, and, you know, being as close to good friends with each employee as you could without being weird. Yeah. So, you know, obviously talked about the MSP and, and how you started Stack. I mean, I, I know just in the year and a half for maybe a little bit less, somewhere in that neighborhood that we've known yeah. each other. I mean, you've gone some, gone some, gone through some transition, just like we have, uh, all yeah. for the better, you know, trying to create that vision moving forward. What, uh, can you take us through what that looks like and what your, what your goals are moving forward for Stack? Yeah. So, you know, we, we started Stack out of, our MSP, obviously, because we in New York City, before we grew, it was really important for us to find the efficiencies and leverage the tools that we had bought, like ConnectWise, to use every component of it that was relevant to our business and our process. And so we've kind of always been founded in automation. Sometimes I joke that it's because Scott and I were lazy and we didn't want to have to do things over and over again. So let's figure out how to automate it. And then we can move on to the next thing to automate. But that really founded sort of the, the you know, it, it gave this foundation for Stack. And we started Stack to that effect, right? To create and help people use and leverage the tools to be as efficient as possible so they could spend time with people. And that to us was really successful in growing our MSP was that FaceTime engagement. So with Stack, we've continued to evolve over that process. We bring in EOS because we were growing, we were hitting a wall. We start to implement that. And then that kind of brings us up to getting through the pandemic. Okay. And then this last year and the challenges of what we've seen, both where the space is going, as well as we where, as an organization are going. And um, the big thing that you will likely hear me talking about at least for the next 12 to 18 months is all around process automation. And it's something that we've been doing and we've been doing for quite a while, but the term robotic process automation or RPA now is continuing to push down from the enterprise. And in fact, um, Aaron, the former CEO of Perch last week just got a two and a half million dollar seed round to create RPA for the MSP, which is, which is great to see that there are other people out there that recognize this gap and something that we've kind of been doing for the last five or six years at Stack anyway, but now it has a term and an industry-wide term. So we've always had this sort of division between our development side, our SaaS side, and our services side at Stack. And for us, the evolution, and I think you know a lot of what we've talked about, Tim, as far as where we want to go as an organization is to bring these pieces together. So that it's not just consulting around the tools, it's not just a virtual admin around the tools, but it's also leveraging all the skills that we've built up over the last you know, decade or more around automating pieces, automating that for the MSP. And in many ways, helping the MSPs identify what it is in their process they can automate and how to actually automate that. And so that's really the, I think, the transition that we've started. And it, it certainly has been some, some bumps on finding the vision and also seeing what's going on in the ecosystem has been a challenge as well. 
Um, but I'm seeing that that voice solidify more. And, you know, now that now that people are out there funding tools that are doing exactly what we're building is really great to see. So, Bill, I'm an MSP. I'm really not familiar with RPA, let's say, and I want to mm-hmm. kind of get started with it. What's kind of what's kind of a good entry point for somebody that's thinking about starting to understand more about rom- robotic process automation and really getting in there to serve their clients? Yeah. So, you know, I think the first thing is to look at without going too deep down into what RPA is, right? Because RPA is really that term about the process automation. Love acronyms, right? You know, we we all love the acronyms. And in fact, some people, some people last week, I was like, oh yeah, we were really starting to, we were starting to look and build a process around RPA. They're like, RP what? What is that? What exactly is that? (laughs) So I just started referring to it as process automation. Um, the tools, whether they're using the ConnectWise stack now or not, there are tools that do automation. Mm-hmm. And it's not just your PSA. You know, RMMs have always been about automation, but in a way that is really about trying to replace the manual labor and almost do that, oh, I'm going to bill for things that my robot is doing for me. Mm-hmm. And you've got to make that part of the bigger picture. And that I think is where I see what, what RPA really is, is that it's not just doing a script, right? It's not just creating a workflow. It's about the process that wraps around that and how important that is to the interaction with the client. And it's not about taking jobs. It's about being efficient. It's about being able to spend the quality time. So to get back to where I would see, you know, Brian and MSP approaching RPA is first look at what you're automating. Um, and one of the things that I've always championed, and I did a session about it at IT Nation again, is, you know, you have to categorize your information. You have to identify what's coming in so you can see where you're spending your time. And if, you, if you're not doing that, that's the first thing I would recommend that an MSP does, right? Identify what you're actually doing, manual or, pro, you know, automated. Where is that time going? And what are the opportunities to wrap around that? That starts to then get into process automation, but at a very simple level so that by the time you're mature enough and you're identifying where you're spending your time and what you should and shouldn't be spending your time on, that mm-hmm. conversation around process automation takes on another level. And it starts to involve people from multiple teams. It starts to involve interactions with the clients, right? And it's not about depersonalizing it but it's about making it more efficient and making it so that that real conversation can solve the pieces that you're never going to be able to automate. Yeah. I think, you know, it's a conversation and a huge yeah. opportunity for the MSP space. You know, we had um, Jay McBain from Forrester here on the show a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Well, actually it's probably been about a month or two now. And yeah. he was really talking about that the future of the MSP has to be around automation in analytics and security, right? Those are the three areas and start really looking at your, your you know, kicking the brake fix piece to the curb almost. And I think you probably saw, heard the same message I did last week at IT Nation, Bill, which was really, hey, the MSP is just an add-on to your, what, what needs to be an MSP focused first type yeah. attitude and advisory focused first type attitude. And, um, you know, I think that's going to be the, the, the challenge over the next few years. Will MSPs pick up on it, right? Still amazes me every once in a while. I'll hear from somebody that said they just adopted the MSP model three years ago and they've been in business 50. I know, I know. That was my mind, right? I know. How did you? I know. I, I'm, more that you, I'm more impressed that you. I'm more impressed that you made it that long before having to do it, kicking and screaming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I every once in a while I'll get somebody ask if, hey, can we just do hourly work with you? And I'm like, yeah, no, you can't. I don't do hourly. I haven't done hourly work for so long. That model is, you know, that model's 20 yeah. years old. Yeah. And there's a reason it doesn't exist you know so I, yeah i you know brian i think one thing that that is really interesting that came out last week as well is you know connectwise just like uh data was you know a month earlier security 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 yeah. security and that's great beat that drum but i think sometimes that's drowning out the fact that you can you know you can even leverage you know a sock service to provide pieces of that or leverage software to provide pieces of that. But if you're not prepared to deal with what comes in from that, you know, yeah, you got a patch, but that's table stakes, right? You've got to be able to understand and identify where's the skills gap. How, you know, how do I engage with a vendor that is going to provide a SOC service that I'll never be able to What stack? is the communication yeah. workflow you even have to put out there? Because you yeah. got to notify more than, 
your your five people that have been involved in this. Now you got to get the full business in, maybe even the authorities, right? How do you got an incident response plan and how are you automating the different facets there? Absolutely. And this is the art form that I think, um, you know, really opens up the door for a lot of huge opportunity because I think, you know, the MSP community thinks in tools, man. That's our, our biggest challenge is they you know, yes. think in stack, we think it's tool. <laughs> What's yep. your stack, you know, and everybody acts yeah. like it's yeah. the biggest secret sauce. I attended Rick Jordan's session and he literally put up his company's 27 things that they have in their stack right up on the screen and said, take them. I don't care. Right. Yeah. They're all yeah. just part of a bigger process. And if you That's can't so figure cool. out that process, you're probably not competing with me. Right. So, you know, the reality is I see this huge opportunity for, Hey, if you're going to bring in security, how do you elevate it to give advisory services, then automate the components that are going to help feed the information. So then when an incident strikes, you've got the intelligence to actually relay back and take action. Right. And I think the MSPs that can figure that out and it doesn't just have to be around security, right? It's the same thing. If you've got data that you want to digest and then understand how that data is going to help your business and put it into some sort of framework, that's going to give you the intelligence to take action. That's where I see all this kind of automation capability coming into play. Is that where oh, you yeah. see yourself really, uh, you know, maturing and morphing uh, into I, over time? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, part of last week was me doing a little bit of a litmus test around the message that we want to communicate, you know, and, and the feedback I got was amazing. Because each one of these tools has some level of automation, inside of it, right? Some more than others, some works well, some don't. Some have an API, some have a really robust API. And they say we play by pushing that data back and forth, but the reality is, is that it's just pushing data. There's not any massaging or mapping of that data or actual automation around what that data does. And so while I think these messages are great around, you know, around what an MSP needs to add to their suite of products, there's a huge gap. And I think there's also a huge skills gap because you can have somebody, you know, that is really amazing at automate scripting. I've got a few of those guys on my team, but getting them to start to understand how PowerShell sh sorts into that, right? Or how things like Power Automate, right? Microsoft stack that's gonna continue to push towards all of us on how we need to make that play. There's automation all across the board that is a real challenge. And that's where I see the big need coming and a way to really accelerate where an MSP goes by providing, you know, again, not just a tool, not like a Zapier that allows you to map one to one. It's too simple. And MSPs are not simple. And we've talked with ISVs for the last 10 years who've pushed into this space because they see the opportunity with MSPs, but they don't get it. And now anybody that comes in almost has to have these check boxes to be able to cater to an MSP. But again, it's not, it, it, the way all this data plays is a huge challenge and a huge skill set. And that gap is the gap that we intend to fill as we move down the road, right? You know, not just being the guys that go and fix and tune your automate server and make it play nice with ConnectWise. You know, for us, that's, again, that's table stakes, right? We have to look at the bigger picture and how it connects and automates around the other tools and tools that don't even exist yet. And unfortunately, as you know, there's so many different levels of MSP maturity out there. Some can't even see Very the much. forest beyond the trees yet with that. And that's part of the challenge too. You know, mm -hmm. um, when I'm, when I'm really talking to customers, I'm always talking in terms of process and they still, a lot of times come back to me and go, yeah, but I just want to hear about the feature. And, right. and I cringe a little bit when I hear that because I'm like, if you don't have, have an understanding of what the process is, you're really not going to get the value. Yeah, and I, I don't want to sound dramatic here, but those guys are going to be acquired yeah. or they're going to go out of yeah. business, right? They, it's just the nature of it. And, and hopefully they'll be acquired and they'll get a nice paycheck and they can go do, you know, whatever they want to do next. Yeah. But it, it's, you know, it's just like I, we still come across people that are managing on-prem active directory or, or even managing, you know, exchange server. And it is like, wow, I get it, but you've got to change or you're just going to continue to fade into the background because you can't grow and you can't scale that way with the way everything has happened. Technology has improved, et cetera. And it is fascinating to me that there's still a lot of people that hold on to that, uh, that old school, I guess that old school yeah, technology. Yeah. You know? they, yeah. they, they, they resist change and yeah. 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 safety net yeah. yep. it is all right so i think we're getting towards the end of our time um you know if do you have any real big message you want to share as kind of a closer bill in terms of what you're trying to do or anything that you're promoting right now that uh msp should be aware of as they as they work to get in touch with you 
Yeah, so I, I think uh, the, the biggest message that I, I can and I always communicate is that if you go and you look at your service board, and hopefully you're at the point that you have more than one service board, <laughs> but if you have a bunch of tickets that are sitting in a default status or a default category, you need to act now. You need to pay attention now because you're never going to be able to scale. And the only way that we got to 65 and the reason that we started Stack Advisors is to help people to be able to scale. And that was the other message that I really took last week is to be ready to scale. And so, you know, whether you use us or a, another company to leverage the tools to be at a point that you can start to pay attention to what's coming next, mm -hmm. which is the process automation, which is leveraging tools like our MSP tool shed machine deployment tool. I mean, that's process automation and it is a huge savings. And I know a lot of people say, oh, you're going to save all this time. It's all about driving money, driving money to the bottom line. And that is either by scaling because you can spend more time with your clients because you're not doing the mundane processes or by making more profit because you are taking less time to do everything. And that's where it's going. I mean, the, the RMM is table stakes. And last week I started talking about the XMM, right? Because monitoring is not just an automate or a data or a Kaseya. It's your security software. It's yeah. your, you know, your backups have always been part of that, but that ties into it. You've got your SOC, your NOC, your third parties. All of this is monitoring and you have to tie that in. If you don't tie that in, you can't automate it. And if it's all a big mess, how are you going to know what you're making money on? Oh, very well said. Yeah, there's some moving parts in there, man. A few of Just them, yeah. Agent. Better yeah. you than me. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys got me all wound up. Like I, I love talking about this stuff. It's it's just I could go on for I could go on and, and on and on and on and on about yeah. it. So, um, but it is uh, it's just really important. And you know, when we grew, we adapted to the environment that we were in, and it's very different now. Even in six years since we sold the MSP space, you know, in our MSP, the space is really, really different. And um, I, I, you know, again, I hope the guys that aren't changing can find a good little cash out, but I see a lot of organizations now, you know, the three, the five, the 10,000 MSP is no longer an anomaly. And they've done it because they're scaling and they're automating. Yeah. Automate so you have more time for face-to-face -face and people skills, right? Yep. And that's where the profit I, is. Yeah. Last week I said scalability is not just about adding new clients. It is about retaining clients and yeah, adding right. new clients. Yep. That's right. and well said. <laughs> said. <laughs> well, uh, Bill, Brian, Tim, we're coming up to our close here. Uh, for anybody who is looking to get in touch with Bill, we will be including his LinkedIn profile on this podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. Bill, real quick, what would be a great way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah. Uh, so I, I, if people go to stackadvisors.com or msptoolshed.com, uh, I get a copy of the forms that are filled out there. Um, otherwise, if people want to email me directly, they can email me, Bill, at stackadvisors.com. And as you can tell, I'm happy to chat about this stuff. Any <laughs> yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, just for uh, also for a reminder, this episode will be up on MSPBusinessSchool.com or anywhere that you get your podcast. Fellas, I really appreciate your time today. Bill, as, as always, a pleasure talking with you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. having you on. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. All right.